Hi everyone, my name is Cyprian, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make these crochet dishcloths or washcloths. You can really use them any place you want. It has this beautiful edging and you can choose to make that in a contrast color or the same color and also make it in stripes. I'll give instruction later on about the stripes, but to get started today all you need is 50 grams of worsted weight yarn for the main color of the cloth about 30 grams for the contrast color and a 5.5 millimeter hook. If you don't have a 5.5 millimeter hook, by all means go down to a 4.5 or as high as a 6.5 and the pattern will still work out great for you. So gather up those supplies and we'll jump right into the video. I want to mention quickly that this video is for beginners, but I will have timestamps for people who know how to crochet so that if you, you can jump ahead to where you need to be in the video. So what I'll be doing is giving instruction and then after that instruction is given, I'll slow down for beginners and teach the stitches um, and how you do them. So you can work at your own pace using the timestamps below. Now if you're making this striped version here, all that you're going to be doing is two rows of the main color followed by one row of the contrast color. So that's how I've done it, but of course you can make your color changes any way you want. And I will also have a timestamp below if you're unsure how to do color changes. I have a part of the video for that as well. Okay, so we're ready to jump in. Okay, so for those of you who already know how to crochet, you can go ahead and make a chain of 28 stitches. For everyone else, I'm gonna show you how to do the slip knot and we'll work the starting chain together. So you're just gonna cross your yarn over, make an X, pinch that X, reach through, and pull up the loop, okay? Then just give a little tug on the loose end, don't pull it too tightly, slip your hook through back to front, and continue closing that loop. Just be sure that you do not close that loop too tight because if you do that, it's going to make it really difficult to work those stitches into. Okay, so that is your slip knot made. From there, we're going to go ahead and chain 28. So let me show you how to make the chain. So you're just going to yarn over. Now what I like to do is pull this loop open a little bit while I catch the yarn with my hook and pull it through. Now that is your first chain made. So we're going to go ahead, yarn over, pull through the loop, and that is your second chain made. And you're going to continue this way till we have 28 chains, and we'll count those together. You don't count the loop on your hook because that's not a completed chain. Just look for these stitches that are the V, and we'll meet up and count and make sure we have 28. Okay, so I've finished my chain and I've counted to make sure that I have 28 stitches. So go ahead and do that. And for anybody who's not sure, again, it's just these V's. So you'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And just remember that you do not count the loop on your hook. Now it is really important for this texture to work out. You have to have an even number of stitches. Now, for row one, if you already know how to crochet, the nicest way to do the beginning row is to be working in the back bumps. Beginners, if you are comfortable doing that, go ahead and work a single crochet in the back bump all the way across. But if you're finding that too difficult, then I will show you how to just work into the chain, and that is a little bit easier. Okay, so that's what it should be looking like if you're working in the back bump. Okay, now if you're a brand new beginner, we can work directly into the chain. Placing a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. So that's your first stitch, that's your second stitch. And what you're gonna do is you can see that there's three pieces of yarn here. So this is your back loop, this is your front loop, and this is what would be the back bump. So you're gonna work in between the middle piece of yarn and the back loop consistently all the way across. So you just insert your hook, yarn over, pull that loop through. Then you've got two loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and through those two loops. 
and that's your single crochet made. So again, make sure you're putting it in the same place for consistency. So between that middle piece of yarn and the back loop, you're gonna insert your hook. And I like to put my finger here to keep control of those loops that are on my hook. Yarn over, pull through your loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And that's two single crochets made. So you're gonna continue this way all the way across, and then we'll meet up to count our stitches at the end of row one. Okay, so I am at the end of row one now, and I finished my chain of 28. Um, so for people who already know how to crochet, go ahead to the timestamp that starts with row two, and for beginners, I'm gonna show you how to count your stitches. Okay. So again, like the chain stitch, you have all these little V's and that's what you're gonna count. So we're gonna start here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, and 27. So that's perfect. You want 27 stitches because if you remember we had 28, but we started in the second chain, which means we dropped one stitch. So 27 is perfect. Do that for you guys. At the end of row one, we just want to do another chain stitch. So yarn over through the loop and then turn your work. Now working directly into this very first stitch here, we're going to work a one single crochet. We're going to chain two, one, two and work another single crochet directly into that same stitch. Okay. So the next thing we do is skip the next stitch and work into the next. We're going to work another single crochet, chain two, one, two, and work right back into that same stitch. So there's no new stitches here which is why I'm not giving instruction on how to do those because we did those in the very first chaining row and the very first row. Skip next stitch, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. So you're gonna do that all the way to the end and then we'll meet up and do a count and continue with row three. Okay, so I am at the end of row two now, and we just want to make sure that we have 14 chain two spaces. So when I say chain two spaces, I'm talking about this space here, which is in between the two single crochets that you made. So we'll just count those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's perfect. So every time you finish a row now, you're going to double check that you have 14 chain two spaces. So to finish off row two, we are just going to do a chain stitch and turn our work. Now for every row moving forward now is the same as row three. And all we're going to be doing is working that same stitch combination directly into the chain two spaces. We're going to work a one single crochet, we're going to chain two, and work another single crochet directly into that same stitch. Okay. So this is a one row repeat. You're going to be doing the exact same thing for the rest of the pattern. Now, because we're not using a gauge for this pattern, I'm going to say to finish working row three until the height of your cloth measures the width of your cloth. So we'll just work along and at the end of every row you're going to chain one and turn. So I'll just work the end of this row and start row four for beginners and for everyone else just go ahead and work the same combination until your width is the same as your height then we'll meet up and I'll show you how to finish off and start your border if you're making a border. 
Okay, so I'm at the end of row three and you can see that texture starting to begin. Isn't it looking pretty? So continue to make sure that you have 14 chain two spaces across. So remember every point will be your chain two space. And at the end of every row, you're gonna make your chain stitch and work directly into that chain two space. And also, you know, for beginners, what else is really nice about this pattern is quite often when you're making a regular uh, crochet dishcloth, a lot of the time it's hard to keep your sides straight because it's hard to differentiate between that chaining, um, the, the chain one stitch and the beginning stitch. So because you're working into the spaces, as long as you're keeping your count consistent and hopefully your gauge as consistent as you can, then you're gonna end up with a nice straight edge. So go ahead, use the timestamps to help you out if you need to look things up and find out how to do them again. And then we'll meet up and start on the edging of the cloth. Okay, so I have finished the base of my dishcloth and another quick way to check and make sure that it's square, if you are doing it on the road and you don't have a tape measure, is just by folding it on a diagonal. And as long as those edges meet up, you are good to go. Okay, so the final thing that we're gonna be doing now is, um, first let me mention, if you're not gonna do the border, um, we're not working down here. We're just going to finish up this edge so that it matches this edge down here. So the last thing that you're going to be doing before we start our edge is just chaining one. I've already done a chain one and turning. And then we're just going to be working a, two single crochets into each chain two space. So no chaining, just two single crochets. And make sure that you work them fairly loose because if you work them too tight, you're going to end up with the edge of your cloth puckering. You're going to actually be pulling it and making it smaller. So just go ahead and work two single crochets into each chain two space across. And then for some of you, you'll be done. And for others, we'll meet up and we'll start making the border that you see here. This pretty, pretty border. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I've worked across. I'm just gonna work two single crochets in this last stitch. And then we are actually gonna be fastening off and rejoining our yarn. So to fasten off, you just make a chain stitch and pull it all the way through. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna reattach our yarn this was our foundation chain, so make sure that your starting tail is at the left here. And you're gonna work in the last stitch of the foundation chain. So we're gonna join our yarn. So just insert your hook, pull it, pull it through, make a chain stitch, and then work right back in to that corner stitch there. And we're going to be working four single crochets into there. So insert your hook. That's one, two, three, and four. What we're going to be doing now is working a single crochet in the end of the rows. Now, because of the way the stitches are done, it's not always easy or clean to find each row. So here you'll find a stitch. You can tell that that's a single crochet. Just work in the end of that row, keeping your stitches loose while working all the way around. So the next stitch here, you're gonna kind of be working in that single crochet again and placing another stitch, keeping your stitches loose so that you're not puckering your dishcloth. I'm going to work all the way across here and then I'll meet up at the next corner. Okay, so I finished working that one edge and what we're going to be doing moving forward is placing four single crochet into each corner stitch. So just do the best you can here to find the corner. So that's one, 
two, three, and one more. And then this is actually, you're working now across the top. So you have single crochets you can work into here. So just work a single crochet all the way across. So you're gonna work a single crochet all the way across four double for sorry four single crochet in the corner then single crochet down the side ending with four single crochet here now you're not going to place another row of single crochet along the bottom because then you would end up with a double thickness of single crochet and we don't want that so go ahead and do that and then I'll meet up with you to change our yarn and start on the border Okay, so I'm at the very last stitch now. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then what we'll do is we will, at the last stitch here, just change to our contrast yarn if you're using one. So what you're gonna do is just on this last stitch here, instead of completing the single crochet, you're gonna grab your contrast yarn and finish that stitch with the contrast yarn. Okay, and then that's your color change made. Now moving forward, what you're gonna be doing is working the same stitch that you worked for the entire dishcloth. So in the next single crochet here, which would actually be the first single crochet of the first um, starting row, you're gonna work the single crochet followed by two chains followed by the single crochet and you skip the next stitch single crochet two single crochet or sorry two chains followed by a single crochet so you're going to work that pattern all the way around even when you get to the corners here you're just going to keep working the stitch pattern here, skipping a stitch and working around. So work that round and then we'll meet up and check our work. Okay, so I finished one round of the trim and you could leave it here if you want. I mean, this looks super cute just like this, but we're gonna continue on and do another round. So all you wanna do at the end of the round while you're working on the trim is just join to the very first stitch the slip stitch, chain one and turn, and then work the opposite way all the way around the exact same way. So the single crochet, chain two, single crochet, but this time you're working into all those chain two spaces just like you did on the base of the dishcloth. So we'll just go ahead and do that and meet up at the end of this round. And again, at the corners, you don't have to add any stitches because we added four at the beginning. You'll be surprised, but there's actually plenty of room to just keep working another round. Okay, so we'll meet up when we're done that. Okay, so we just finished round two of the trim and we're gonna do one more round of the same stitch. So just join that stitch, chain one and turn, and you're just going to continue working the exact same way. And at the end, you're just going to fasten off and weave in all your ends. And I'll put a timestamp below so that you can go back and see how I fastened off when we were working with the green yarn. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these videos next. And until next time, bye bye.